Yeah, my vision was gone. I couldn't see anything. Uh, I leave in five days to ride to Sturgis, South Dakota, and I am not ready. In this video, I have a lot of items that I need to accumulate, collect, organize, prepare for, trial and error, stuff like that for my 1500 mile road trip one way to Sturgis, South Dakota. Uh, it's only 1300 miles from my house to Sturgis, but I'm going to be riding to Nebraska first, meeting up with Heather and Brian, and then we're gonna ride north from Nebraska. So 1500 miles one way before I even get to the rally, and it is hot. It's hot in Ohio, it's hot in North America, it's hot in the, like, the upper hemisphere. Um, and I very much do not do well in the heat. I know I get a lot of crap from the, all the uh, at-gat people, but I wanna let you guys know sometimes when you see me riding without proper gear, it's because I am very prone to blacking out when I get too hot. So on those really, really hot days, I just don't ride because it's not worth the risk and I have blacked out before in the heat to the point where I was unable to ride a motorcycle safely. So in today's video, I'm gonna head over to a local power sports store and see if I can get some kind of cooling vest or a new mesh jacket or something because whereas I am very comfortable and competent riding in a t-shirt locally around roads I'm very familiar with, I am not dumb enough to take a multi thousand mile road trip without proper gear. So that's what we're doing. But first things first, I took my tour pack off of the road glide. So I'm going to put my luggage rack back on because I got to start strapping some stuff to the bike and making sure that I can actually safely carry everything I need to carry all the way over to South Dakota. Oh, I can't wait for that second garage. I don't know if you guys can see what I'm doing down here. This is the luggage rack that I got when I bought the motorcycle used. So I'm just going to Slip it right back on. Unfortunately, it does not really have the aesthetic that I want to mimic Appa, but it's highly functional and I do love a good functional asset. Is that on? Hello? Oh, geez. no, it is not on. There we go. There we go, now it's on. All right, let's hit the road. So I spent a lot of time on Amazon this morning buying some stuff that I've really been needing for my camera gear. Uh, I do plan on documenting my entire road trip and experience at the Sturgis Rally and then all of my experiences after. So definitely subscribe if you haven't done so yet. This is going to be my longest solo road trip to date. Uh, I really intended on doing a cross country road trip during this entire time but I don't know if I'm gonna have the time to go all the way to the West Coast and then all the way back. I have a lot of things coming up at the end of the month and I wanna make sure I, I give myself enough time to rest after this big road trip. So I'm estimating I'm gonna be on the road for roughly two weeks, if not two and a half weeks, and I should be riding right around 4,000, potentially 5,000 miles. So. Like in one of my last videos, my road glide just got his 25,000 mile service. So it would be cool if by the time I get back to Ohio, we can roll over to 30,000 miles. That would be amazing. So if you can tell, I'm wearing a mesh jacket right now. This is a fly racing mesh jacket I got from JP Cycles a couple years ago. It's a wonderful mesh jacket. I have gained a little bit of weight and this thing doesn't stretch at all. So that's why it's, that's why it's not uh, zipped up all the way. <laughs> but it is a very nice mesh jacket. Unfortunately, it is black and it's very sun faded, I can tell. So it really doesn't do that much for actually keeping me cool when riding. And of course, being on a bike with a full fairing is kind of counterintuitive to any kind of cooling system. I have all of the vents open on my Harley and it's still just, when it's hot, it's hot, man. So my goal for today, I would ideally like to find either a lighter color mesh jacket or potentially um, like a mesh jersey, like an armored mesh jersey so that I don't have to wear like the actual bulkiness of a jacket. And uh, mostly I don't want another jacket because it, it's hard to pack, it's hard to travel with. So if I had a shirt that had armor in it, that would be a bit easier to pack up, I believe. And then I also really want to try to find a cooling vest. And the thing about cooling vests is you can't wear them with a mesh jacket 
because it just dries out too fast and it doesn't cool you down. So I might be wearing my Alpine Stars uh, ADV style jacket for this road trip because it's vented and it's heavy duty. So if it does get cold, I can stay warm and then I can wear a cooling vest underneath and hopefully cool down. So I've, I've been doing a lot of research on proper etiquette and gear to wear for this longer distance motorcycle trip. And uh, if you've seen any of my other long distance bike trips this year, you'll know that I was impatient. I was in a hurry. I didn't drink enough water and I was struggling. I was not doing okay. So on this trip, I'm definitely going to take care of my health. This is a marathon, not a sprint. This will be the longest road trip I have taken to date. I don't plan on doing any iron butts on this trip. I very much want to stay comfortable, uh, take care of my bike, maintain my bike and my body. So I don't have anywhere to be, nothing to do, except have a good time and hang out with my friends. And I'm very, very excited. And if you guys missed the videos where I actually have already been to Sturgis, South Dakota, I just didn't go for the rally. You can check those videos out right here. Those were a lot of fun to make and very, very happy I had that opportunity because now when I go back for the rally, it's just gonna be for fun. The thing that I struggle with about when I want to, um, you know, do these long distance road trips and stuff is I I am a storyteller, you know? I, I don't know if you guys remember, <sighs> I quit my full-time job last year. It's been exactly a year. The fact that I have been able to sustain this living for an entire year now is like, I'm, I'm beyond honored and humbled and the fact that the channel continues to grow is amazing. So I thank you guys so, 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 so much for continuing to stick around and just, you know, take this ride with me. But I actually decided to officially put in my two week notice and quit my full-time job a year ago because I was unable to attend the Sturgis rally last year. And I didn't quit my job because I couldn't go to Sturgis. I quit my job because I had found out, I would finally figured out after a decade of working for this company that I really didn't have a great work-life balance. And I think that's where a lot of people are, that's what a lot of people are discovering now by, with the pandemic, a lot of us being forced to work from home, we realize that we're literally selling our souls and slaving away for these companies that are making millions and billions of dollars and we're earning ends meet. And it's not even about the money. It, it was literally the work-life balance that I was not okay with. The fact that I couldn't just take two weeks off to go have a motorcycle trip of a lifetime was not okay with me. And so fortunately, I started my YouTube channel two entire years before I quit my full-time job. So every single penny I made from YouTube, I was able to save up. So that put me in a very comfortable position to say goodbye to what I was doing for a living. So now I finally have the opportunity to take my time, ride to Sturgis and uh, take my time getting there. That's, you know, that's, that's one of the reasons I couldn't go last year is everyone's like, oh, you can stay with me. You know, you can camp with me. You just come have fun. And I didn't have the actual time to take to ride out there you know, 1300 miles. I don't care who you are. That's a long time to be riding. <laughs> Doing an iron butt on this motorcycle almost killed me, let alone taking the time to ride 1300 miles. But yeah, I had to order a whole bunch of extra batteries. And then of course, and, and this is gonna sound so counterintuitive, but one of the things I absolutely hate about motorcycle travel is all the gear you have to carry with you for the damn bike. <laughs> Like, I want to bring clothes and bathing suits and computers and camera gear and camping gear. But then I have to remember there's so much stuff I actually have to keep with me at all times on the motorcycle. Like a tire repair kit, a jump start kit, a first aid kit, rain gear. God, rain gear takes up so much damn room. And it's literally the last thing you want to have to worry about when you're riding is wearing rain gear. So I have all of those things I have to accommodate for, for space. And then of course, you know, I'm in my 30s, so I have to have a shit ton of medicine with me. Like I gotta have ibuprofen, Excedrin, Benadryl, antihistamines, antacids, <laughs> band-aids, Neosporin. Oh my God, I should probably bring some Icy Hot, for real, I'm addicted to Icy Hot. But yeah, like those are just, there's so much stuff because I love to travel in comfort. I love to be comfortable. So those are the things that I have to make sure I have with me at all times. A lot of other things, you know, I can pick up on the road, 
for example, I don't plan on doing a ton of camping on this trip solely because of space. Um, I do want to go see some beautiful areas. I want to go up into Montana and potentially Wyoming. And uh, if I can find some Airbnbs while I'm out there, that would be awesome. I would so much rather stay in somebody's private Airbnb than just have to book hotels along the interstate the entire way. But we'll see what happens. I know this is the busy season out there and I've never experienced it before. So I'm literally flying by the seat of my pants on this entire trip. <laughs> There's not going to be a whole lot that I'm actively planning out. But yep, first things first, I need to go find myself some appropriate gear to make sure that I'm very protected from the sun and the elements during this road trip. So I found a mesh jacket that I really like. It's a lot more lightweight than my current one and it fits the girls, which is important. But I have some Kevlar lined leggings here that I kind of want to try on. So let's see how those go. Honestly, I'm not holding my breath. I can never find pants to fit me well. 12 seconds later. Oh my God, these actually fit. So they're leggings, they're super, super stretchy, comfortable. There's like no zipper. They have knee pads and they're fully Kevlar lined. And I can put some hip pads in them too. Yo. I think we have a winner. So these are Cortec, the Lolo. Um, if I can find these online, I will link them below because I've never been so comfortable in armored pants before. They're not jeans. They're like a really soft material, but look at this. Ultimate dexterity, no zippers, no pinching, and it's high-waisted. Yeah, I think, I think it's $150. Oh no, $125. Let's get these. Okay, this is a little awkward. I'm in the bathroom, but I bought a fly racing cooling vest and it has like that gel technology in it. So I'm going to put it in some water and wear it on my way home to see how well it works. <laughs> It's actually not that hot today. It's only gonna be up to like 84 degrees, but this will give me a pretty good idea. Water's not super cold either. Just got back out to the bike. <laughs> Trying to do this in public is awkward. The crazy thing is it doesn't really feel wet. I didn't wring it out as good as I would have liked to, but I don't know if you can see. Yeah. So I'm gonna go ahead and throw my old jacket on. Cause it's pretty comparable, but let's see how it does on the road. I still just can't. <laughs> Zipping up past my damn boobs. All right, well, I guess I should be happy I even have them. All right, let's roll. Whew, it felt really good in the shade as soon as I get back in the sun. My, my face is sweating. <laughs> oh my God, I spent over $300. $300. I got three pieces of clothing. I got pants, I got a jacket, and I got a cooling vest. But you know what? I need to try stuff on. That's my biggest complaint about buying stuff online is it's such a freaking hassle because especially women's clothing. So I had a gentleman in there helping me try, or he wasn't helping me try on my gear. No, 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 no. He was helping me pick out my gear to try on. And uh, he found me a fly racing mesh jacket in a size large and it fit great. It was actually a little big, a little loose, a size large. And then immediately he went over to find, I think it was a speed and strength jacket, a 2XL. And I literally, like the zipper wouldn't even touch. So he looked at me and he was like, are you serious? Is it really that big of a difference in size? So I was like, yep, 
Welcome to women's motorcycle gear. I can wear a medium in some brands and I have to wear a 4XL in other and it's just absolutely ridiculous. It's infuriating if I'm being completely honest. Man, one day, one day, I would very much love to be able to create my own gear. And I know everyone thinks that and I'm so happy that everyone's on the same page with wanting to be more inclusive with women's gear, especially because it's needed. It is needed. Half the time, I really do have to buy men's gear because I'm built like a damn linebacker. But today was not the case. Everything I purchased was technically uh, female riding gear, except for the except for the cooling vest. I have that on right now, and uh, that was technically a men's cooling vest. <laughs> Interested to see how it feels on the road. I kind of wish I had one that was like full on long sleeve too, because uh, my arms are hot. But yeah, I would go ahead and qualify today was I was in like panic mode. After experiencing the heat that I experienced in Sturgis last weekend, I uh, I can't do that again. I don't think I actually explained it in any of those videos, but the very first day I got out to Sturgis, it was a Thursday before the ADV festival. And uh, I was just coming off of being sick. You guys, if you follow the channel, you'll know that I was really, really sick a couple weeks ago. I'm 99% sure it was COVID, even though I took four different tests, all different brands and all four said negative. Um, pretty sure it was COVID and I was clear like I was better I was fully like healthy and happy and better but I wasn't back to like 100% and so I flew out to Sturgis for this event um barely anything to eat I literally only had like a little bag of Doritos at the airport that day before hopping on the Pan America taking a refresher training course and then it was over 14 hours of travel, no sleep, nothing to eat, hardly any water, because it's just hard to consume that much water when you're on airplanes. I blacked out, I blacked out from the heat, and it was very, very scary. Luckily, I was not actively riding the motorcycle when it happened, I had already gotten off of the bike, but I definitely got tunnel vision, I had to go sit down, I, my vision was gone, I couldn't see anything because of heat exhaustion, and like I said, it's a real thing. So. That's the first time that's ever happened to me. I am 33 years old. As I get older, these new health issues start happening. And when you travel solo, it's a big, it's a big deal. So I would definitely qualify um, today as I feel like I went manic and I had an emergency that I had to fix and remedy before I took this cross country road trip. So I definitely did not want to spend that much money today, but I, you know, I only have one life, I have to protect myself, and when I'm on these long distance road trips, I need to be fully protected. So the leggings that I got, ladies, if you are watching, um, I've never, ever, ever experienced that kind of comfort. Obviously, I'll give you a better follow up here in probably a month or so once I wear them on the road and get to break them in a little bit, but initial comfort factor, I cannot believe how comfortable those leggings were. and. The biggest issue, and I get it's leggings, like I, I understand, but the biggest issue is they, they have pockets in the front, which is wonderful, but they didn't have pockets in the rear. And for me personally, I don't carry a purse. I carry a, a chain wallet in my rear pocket. So the fact that I'm gonna have to figure out some sort of alternative way to literally carry all of my life documents with me when I travel is a bit annoying. But you know what? I could probably stitch in some pockets. I could sew pockets into it. I, I hate to say I spent that much money, but you know what, when you are, I want to say when you're a bigger person like myself, but I don't want to say that because I know plenty of very fit, healthy, young, skinny people that still have an issue finding the right fitting gear. Uh, when you find the right fit, you can't, you know, that you can't put a price on comfort. So the one thing I do very much wish I could upgrade in my, uh, in my gear list is I I love my Rurock you guys you know I love my Rurock I do really wish Rurock would make some kind of a modular helmet that is the one thing I really wish I could do while I'm on the road is just pop my helmet open quickly take a drink of water and then plop it back down because it's really a it's a to-do to always be taking a full face off and on again 
And the one thing I don't want is if I were to find some kind of modular helmet, I don't want to lose my fidlock. <laughs> I've gotten so freaking spoiled to having this magnetic fidlock on the Rurock helmets that I, like, I should have seen me trying to take off like the classic D-rings today. It was just, it was hilarious. The only thing that's kind of hot on me right now is my face. Believe it or not, I'm not getting a lot of wind flow. A, because it's a full face helmet and uh, B, because I'm on a full fairing bike. I don't understand why that bridge transition is so atrocious. I cannot believe I haven't crashed there before. But being in this beating down sun, I honestly, like my, my core, my torso, feels cool. I can feel the cooling effect. And um, this is a fly racing cooling vest. And I think the instructions say that it lasts up to 10 hours. Yeah. Okay. We'll see about that. Right now I'm going to be riding for about 40, 30 minutes or something. So we'll see how cool it feels once I get back home. But I was actually talking to a few of the women in that store and we were talking about how, <laughs> unfortunately, when you are a more well-endowed lady up on the top half of your body. And that's so funny because my body is, I am very much larger on the top than I am on my bottom. Uh, you know, body shape is a real thing. And you, you, I, you can have an athletic body shape, hourglass, pear body shape. I'm an apple. That's what they consider me. I am, I have, <laughs> all of my weight is above my hips. And uh, so finding jackets that fit right is nearly impossible because they have to fit big in my belly, like comfortably in my belly, but still have room for the ladies, but then not be super big in the shoulders and ride up and flap in the wind. So it's like I said, you can't put a price on comfort. And I'm very pleased with the gear that I found today. I'm very excited to wear them around and break it in for a little bit longer. But man, I'm just so excited to be taking another road trip with my road glide. It's a uh, we haven't taken a real road trip, like a long distance road trip since last October. Appa and I rode down to the Blue Ridge Parkway. We did Tale of the Dragon, continued on down to Tampa, Florida for the Forgotten Angels camp out. And then we did an iron butt all the way back home from Florida to Ohio. And I believe the total time and mileage for that iron butt ended up being a little over 1114 miles in just under 16 hours it might have been 17 hours i gotta go back i gotta watch the videos again <laughs> i did document that entire experience so you can check those out in my travel vlogs playlist but uh the only road trips Appa and i have taken so far this year is we rode to new york and back for babes ride out that was just a little over 2,000 miles round trip uh and riding while i was out there and this one is i'm just I'm excited. I'm very much looking forward to hitting the road. Crushing miles. That's what I prefer. I'm going to crush miles getting out to my destination. And then I'm going to take my slow, steady time getting back home. So I'm definitely going to finish up this ride. And then once I get back home, kind of give you an overview on what I think of the gear uh, just from this quick little rip. And if I can find them online, I'm going to have them linked down in the description if you want to check them out too. Because riding in the cold sucks but riding in the heat might be worse i don't know man i just don't i don't do good in the heat i don't do it i can feel the sweat on the back of my neck <laughs> oh and of course i bought a black mesh jacket again i don't even know uh, i just you know you like what you like and i like black Okay, well, I don't feel wet, which is like something I was worried about. I mean, it is definitely wet, but my, my head is super sweaty, that's for sure. And my arms are nice and sticky. But yeah, honestly, I think it's gonna do great. Now, if I could really afford it, ooh, I tipped you up too high. If really I could afford it, I would love to buy one of the, like, the kind that, like, pump, like, you can put little freezer packs in it or something. I wonder if I can do that on this. I don't think so. 
Nah, I don't see any pockets. But yeah, totally sticking like a freezer pack in this would be amazing. I am very excited to try those leggings out. The one thing I don't like about the leggings is they're kind of thick. So the uh, I had a pair of Speed and Strength ones that I tried on. They were a lot thinner. They were still Kevlar lined, but a lot thinner material legging and I think a bit more stretchy. Those would have probably fit really great. I'll go ahead and link those down below too if you wanna check out the ones I'm talking about, but they just didn't carry my size. I think the largest they went up to was like a size 10 and I'm typically a size 12 in women's jeans. Uh, men, I know that really doesn't mean anything to you because men's jeans are actually measured width and length, unlike women's, which is, I will never understand, but whatever. Yeah, uh, if you guys wanna go ahead and check out my video of visiting Sturgis for the first time, you can do that right here. And thank you so much for watching this one. Until my next one, you be good, and I'll see you later.